Hello everybody, and welcome to Mike's Retro Tech. Um, refurb video today, bit of a difference. The last refurb I did really was the Tatung Einstein. Um, let's get into it. I have received from eBay, ooh, big packet. What could it be? Well, let's have a look, shall we? Bubble wrap. Bubble wrap. Can you see the yellow? It's very old, very yellow, very retro. It's. 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 Dun, dun, dun. A Nintendo Super NES. There we go. Now, as you can see, it's very yellow. There's a corner bit missing. But, it does look like it's been used because, and it's been working, because where the controller has been is not faded. So I'm quite optimistic this is going to work. Now, it was sold on eBay. I paid... 14 British pounds for it in a non-working state untested unguaranteed to work But the interesting thing was which I saw on the listing Was the warranty void sticker now This has been resold a long time ago because if you look underneath It was tested for safety in 2001 at cash converters which in the UK is like um, where you take your equipment and they give you money for it and then they resell it a bit like a pawn shop but not a pawn shop it's, it does more electronics jewellery sort of well I suppose it is like a pawn shop it's a bit like um, hardcore pawn and the um, American jewellery and loan I suppose but they do there's, there's quite a few there's cash converters there's cash generators and there is CEX which are the, the three um, more popular ones so somebody obviously didn't want to give it to charity they traded it in and then whoever I bought it off must have bought it in 2001 so many many years ago um, all the buttons work and inside you can see that it does look quite clean um, it's going to need a major retro bright session. I mean, it's like, ugh, yeah, horrible. Anyway, with that, that was £14. I've never had one of those before, so this will be good. I've also got this. Now, this was as much as the console. This is, and I can get it out of the box without all the packing peanuts can we see that? a genuine Nintendo NES Super NES power supply that's guaranteed to work that was listed as fully working and it does pop into there so that's good so I've not powered this on yet I've not tested it because it could go pop so do I plug it in now and test it just to see whether the power light comes on I think I might so let me uh, unwind the mass of cables to plug it in there 
put this on the floor behind the camera and then I've got a power supply behind me, a power socket that I can plug in. Like so. Right, so we're all plugged in. Now when I flip this switch, does this power light come on? It does. Right. Now that pleases me because it appears that I've got a working Super Nintendo for £14, or of course, plus the cost of the power supply. But it does mean that if I can get this retrobrighted and make it nice, I've got a Super Nintendo. Now, I had an NES, which I refurbished. It had faulty video memory. I refurbished that, and I sold it very foolishly. And now I've got a Nintendo Switch. And I've had most of the Nintendo machines. The only machine I've never had now is the GameCube. So, if I can restore this, I've got a, a, a cheap football game on cartridge that's coming that I paid £2.99 for. I wasn't willing to expend any money unless I knew it was working. But now the light comes on, I think I might have to buy something like, I don't know, Star Fox, Mario Kart maybe. Um... I don't know, all the classics. I might have to build up a collection for this. Or, I may just get it working and sell it. I don't know yet, I have to wait and see. Oh, and I've also got one official Nintendo controller turning up next week. Um, that was sold as, pick one of these out of a box of many, and not guaranteed to work, or guaranteed to work, they didn't know it was a case of take your pick. So I've got one of those and that was about six pounds, I think. So for less than 30 quid, I've got what looks like a working Super Nintendo. Um, I'm quite excited to be fair, but in the next jump cut, all the components will be here, hopefully. It's looking like the, the week coming up is gonna be really nice. So I'll be getting the retro bright out, which if I can get under my desk without knocking the camera, I will show you in a minute. Okay, put that to one side. So this is what I'll be using. So this is a product called Bee Blonde in the UK, and you can get this from, put it there like that so you can see, you get this from Superdrug, or from Morrison's, or from Asda, or from Tesco, but basically, you can get it anywhere. You look in the hair dye aisle for the peroxide, and basically, what it is, is a maximum cream peroxide, and it's 40 vol. So it's not 40% vol, it's 40 vol. And it's called a B Blonde. And it comes in a tiny little bottle like that, with a child proof cap that you push down and open and as you can see it's white peroxide cream and phew, it stinks so what you do with that is you put it into a plastic pot and then you get a paintbrush and you paint round all the white plastics or, or the yellow plastics in this case now what I will do is I will take off all the grey plastics and do those separately so that the white comes out but hopefully it won't affect the black. I've done this before on other things and, and the, the print has still stayed the same, which is good. Um, I'll do everything that I can take apart that's yellow and hopefully it'll end up like that. I mean, this is quite strange. This looks like this is an aftermarket um, expansion cover. So it looks nice and clean in there, but that's the color that it should be against that color there. And it's all, well not the camera then, it's also interesting to notice that the sticker's missing from here, which may be off the Japanese version, I want to say. I don't know. And then they've got this really strange Nintendo style sockets. A few moments later. You know, that's been sat for a while because in here, yuck, there's a spider's web. Oh, gross. So I think that has been 
by the looks of things in somebody's garage for a long time. Now it'll probably need a recap, as in change the capacitors, not do another video about what I've just done. Ha! <laughs> um, sorry. But that, I think, should be a good refurb project, so we can see Super Nintendo, so Nintendo, Super NES PAL control deck, model number SNSP001A UKV, AC 9 volts 1.3 amps, please only use with the adapter number da, 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 GB only, patent pending. 1992. Now, until the rest of the components come, I'm not sure I can take this apart. Although it is only early on a Saturday morning, I might try now and see if I've got the components to take this apart. A few moments later. So, one thing I did forget to do is before putting this away until next week, here. As you can see the case is cracked and a bit missing. Now that bit didn't come with the parcel. So what I'll need to do, retro bright it, make it white. So I'll make it this colour. And then use some epoxy resin, maybe, or some plastic filler, and just fill that gap in there while this top layer is off. And then make it nice and smooth, sand it down, and possibly I don't know. This section spray white maybe, leave that section as it is. I don't know yet, we'll have to see. I'm not rightly sure what I want to do. I may even customise it and make just that band there, just that band round that side there. I may make that, make that grey, this sort of grey, just to make it look a bit different. But anyway, we'll see. So when all the other kit comes, I'll continue the video and um, we'll do a refurb. Right, so it's been a couple of days and um, everything's turned up. Genuine, untested Super Nintendo Entertainment System controller. The other one I saw said a Super Famicom. So at least this one matches the console. composite video plug so at least I'll be able to connect it to my TV and test it and a cheap game Elite Striker um, £2.99 £2.99 8 quid it's not bad really I suppose the whole console if it works will have worked out at about £30 I think it's pretty good the cartridge. Oh, look at that, that's the shadow off the light. Oh, well, never mind. Um, <laughs> it's quite funny. So let me see if the light's any better with the, the office light turned off. <clears throat> yeah, it's a bit better, it's darker though. Right, so, striker. It's um, a bit gammy there. A bit gammy there. It certainly could do with a clean. Now, horror of horrors. Look. I mean... I mean... Just... Just no. Y you can't even read that sticker. So I'm going to have to... Reproduce that, get one printed, clean this up, take it apart, once I've got the set of Nintendo console opening screwdriver thingies. Uh, what I'm going to do now though, is take you into the other room where the TV is, and plug in, and see whether it works, and I'm expecting some magic blue smoke. I was going to find the TV in another room, but thinking about it, Mrs. Mike's Retro Tech has a laptop with a proper TV as a monitor. 
and this has composite yellow, white and red inputs. So I'm going to come across here now and connect all this up. See if I can't zoom in a bit for you. Okay. And then you'll be able to see me connect it all up and turn on and see if it works. A few moments later. First off, cartridge. Second off, power supply. Now we've already plugged this in and we know that it works. So I'm hoping it works really well with this. Now it goes one way only because there's a notch there into there like so. This then goes around the back of the TV in yellow, red and white. Take the elastic bands off those. And plug this into socket one. Okay. Right, what have we got? The last thing to do is plug the big old chunky power supply into the power. Let me see what's going on here with this. It's a bit twisted. It's a bit twisted. Let's have a see. Yeah, I remember them days. I really do when my cables were all twisted. Right. Oh, I can't find the all. I can't find. Well, where's, well, there's the all. Nope, still can't. Still can't. I need help. Oh, there we go. Right. And then that goes on the floor. And then that, excuse the head, plugs in there. Groovy. Right. How are we now? I want to turn the TV on. Turn on. Select input because the TV is on HDMI and let's see whether I can now show you The TV is on HDMI If I move that across to AV What have we got? Hmm Nothing. Okay. So no component connected. AV. Okay. So, as you can see with that, that is faulty. Oh, okay. So it looks like we have actually got a faulty machine. <sighs> the lights are on, but there's no one at home. Okay, so it's either the console, the cartridge, 
or the output from the cable. It can't be the cable because the cable's brand new. So it must be something else. Right, so it's been a couple of days and I've received a parcel in the post. So this is a repair kit for, I think, every Nintendo console available. Let's have a quick look. We've got, so we've got the screwdriver shaft itself, a plastic sort of, I don't know, spludger. Another plastic spludger for gouging things out. And then one, two, three, four, five, six bits for the screwdriver head. And then those are the two that will go and undo the case on the Nintendo. So I'll go and get the Nintendo and we'll take the case off and just have a quick look and see how disgusting it is inside. Okay, so in that last shot, I realised about here was some sort of shadow. It's from the light in the office. Anyway, upside down Nintendo. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six screws, I think. So what we'll do is we'll... Oh, if I can get that off. Yeah, there we go. So we'll take that one off. And then I think... Yeah, it's that one. It's the biggest bit. Now, the only thing is, is that this warranty stick is going to have to be broken. Boo hoo. But I have a feeling if the warranty's been on for 17 years, it's not going to make a difference. Check off camera how they fit. Oh yeah, there we go. So, as you can see, they are a very strange bit. And it was definitely the right size because it fits perfectly on it. So there we go, it's a very strange screw. Okay, what do we expect? Filth, I expect bulging capacitors oh wow right so it's definitely had some exposure because the inside of the case is the same grotty colour the whole thing has gone yellow there's not one spot in there oh, apart from that lever there which I think is probably a different plastic Wow. That is really yellow. Ugh. Okay, put that to one side. What have we got here? We've got some dust. Okay. Front fascia. Screw, 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 screw. Can we see if there's anything in there? No. Hmm. that there a 
Oh, that's the reset. Hee <laughs> Okay, so that's the reset. So I have to take off <clears throat> that one, that one, that one, that one, the one under the switch, and that one. Yeah. There's a lot of dust in it. Oh, in fact, it's, it's absolutely minging. Oh, wow, look at that. It's gross. Ugh. Well, that's an interesting mechanism. It physically forces the cartridge out of the slot. That's all it does. Wow. Do those slots can be replaced? Right, enough talk. Let's see if I can remove this. See, there's tiny bits of bits of plastic and two pieces of metal, two metal clips. Now I've no idea where they came from. Oh dear, probably over those, to be honest. And there's a piece of plastic come off. Yeah, that goes in the bin. No idea where that's from. Putting this to one side, that is grim. I think it needs a, a wash in hot water. Take the stickers off, take the feet off. I might even put some different feet on there. Okay. So will that one come out properly now? Yes, brilliant. Okay. So there's a big capacitor under there and it could be that that needs replacing. Oh, that's quite cool. See all the holes in it? Wow. Okay. So let's do, oh, that's interesting. Maybe we'll look off camera. What is that? Yeah, looks like the board might have burnt out. Okay, well, we'll see. The power socket needs a resolder. There's gam on the board there, probably needs a clean. It looks like some of those resistors may have busted. But we'll do first of all, we will take off.
a few moments later. Right, so we have a bit of success. Um, I looked online and some people said replace your power socket, check for a bad power connector. Others said just make sure your cartridge is clean. Now, the cartridge that I had obviously was that one, yep, yeah, and it was a bit gammy in there. So I took the cartridge out, which is here. Okay. And I cleaned the contacts, cleaned round the pins, blew it out for a bit, put it back in again. Now it could be the cartridge for the simple reason when I undid it, uh, the inside there was a bit manky. Can you see there's a bit of brown? But inside there, was totally just minging and it doesn't even clean with a brush it's going to need some alcohol or something like that anyway the upshot is clean the cartridge took this off cleaned all around here took this off cleaned all around there took the back component side off all around there Took the top of the RF modulator off, even though I didn't do anything with it, cleaned inside there. When there was no picture, the heat sink was getting really, really hot and not dissipating the heat, which you wouldn't do because there's a heat shield missing. But nothing happened. Whereas now, when I turn on, you ready for this? So I can just zoom in a bit. Okay, I'll take the rubber band off there, move this round here, up, down are working, and A works, as does the sound. But as you can see, with it being a HD panel, it's really, really low quality. I mean, it's really blocky. But, the console lives. I've absolutely no idea how to play this, so up, down, left and right works. B button works, single player. Cameroon and Switzerland. I am rubbish at football. Probably won't work. And I'll probably lose every game. Blimey, that's really low resolution. He saved me goal! I really need to get something like Star Fox on this then. I don't, I can't play football, it saved my life! Yay, foul. Okay, proves it works. Reset button. Works fine. And the sound is perfect. The whole console is running sweet as a nut. Restored Nintendo SNES. Well, restored in the fact that it's in its skeletal form at the moment. I will retrobite the case.
that's the next step. So hopefully the weather will be lovely this weekend and I'll be able to get some Retro Bright on, some Bee Blonde in a bag outside while we go shopping. And by the time we come back, it will be lovely and white. I'll update you as soon as I can. So to accommodate the Retro Brighting and the Bee Blonding, we need to disassemble this. And the whole of the unit, I think, comes off in one go. So if we poke those out of there like that, Oh, and there's a spring as well. Better make sure we don't lose that spring. Ah, look at all the rubbish that's come out of it though. Wow, lots of little pieces of plastic and horrible bits of detritus. Okay, so as an example, <laughs> that's the colour it is now. That's the colour it used to be, which is more in line with the colour of the expansion flap. Yuck! Yay! Yuck! Yay! So I take the eject button out. So that will be retro brighted, that will be retro brighted. Those grey components will just be cleaned. That comes out of there. Another one to just be cleaned. And that, I think, we can take out of there. No, no, not with that um, screwdriver bit we won't. Don't be silly. And there we go. With that. In there like so. So I don't lose that. Okay. So what we've got, that will be clean first of all because it's proper minging. That can be retro brighted and bee blonded. This on the other hand. Ah, you see now. One comes out of there and one comes out of there. Brilliant! I wonder where they came from. I'm happy I found those out now. Okay, so this case is a sorry state. But we do need Let's have a see what can we do. Move those out of the way because we know we've got to clean those. I think what I might do with these stickers, I might put, have I got any? 
Hmm. I thought I might have had some masking tape, but obviously I don't. I might put some cellar tape over those so they don't get destroyed with the bee blonde. Yes, interesting. I might have to think about that. Just because I don't want those, because they're the original stickers, of course. I don't want those stickers to come off. Whereas this one, I couldn't really give a cack about. It needs to come off. There we go. Right, we'll leave that for a few minutes and we'll see what happens. A few moments later. Okay, so it's been about 10 minutes. Let's see if this has worked its magic. Oh, it's very slippy. But, fantastic, look at that. Off you go in the bin, dear boy. Put a bit more on there like that. And then, I have, under the camera, in my store, I've got a big roll, a kitchen roll. A bit of rubbing the stickiness from the sticker has come off and horrible black mark on there okay so I'll do a jump cut now and the next time you see this it will be ready for retro brighting Right, I thought this morning before I went to work, I would do some retro brighting. So I cleaned the case. Disgusting. I used window lean. Just other window cleaners are available. I'll show you what I used. I used some of that out of my cleaning box. In there and that's what came out of it filth the downside of cleaning on a very old machine is that if you're not careful the plastic perishes so that will need repairing now as well as the front of the case but anyway enough of that What I'm going to do now, I get a Ziploc baggy, put one half in one bag, the other half in another bag, okay, and then the little broken bits in a third bag and then I use this the bee blonde and that's the peroxide cream is we take each of the items cover it completely in bee blonde and then stick it in the sun for three or four hours so I found, found another piece that needs to go in that should be grey and it isn't so from there 
they go. Tiny bit like that. Cover it up. Seal it. around they all get coated. Just like that. So I'll do that now for every other bag. Apologies for the different camera. I'm on my phone. Um, we're out in the garden. Um, it's uh, getting brighter. There's some blue sky up there. And some blue sky up there. And hopefully, this will work. So I've put the two, the two case parts and the bits in the bag. Added some water with it. Now, I've never tried the water map before, so we'll have to see what happens. I'm going to go to work now, and in 12 hours' time, I'll be back to see what the results are. I'll keep you posted. <sighs> I don't know what to say. I'm quite disappointed, to be fair. Um. The retro brighting, as you can see, didn't work. There was plenty of sunshine. It had six hours on its front, six hours on its back. And it's just so yellow, this case, that it isn't going to retro bright properly. Um, you can see it's gone really patchy. dribbly um, so yeah it's it's still the same color it should have been that color it's still that color so for the moment I've given up well certainly I've given up on the retro brighting anyway so for the moment I've given up on the retro brighting I've reassembled the machine and I've tested it and it works fully. I mean everything works. The cartridge works, uh, which I did. Try and clean up, as you can see I've taken the sticker off but again that didn't retro bright, it just, it's like rust or something that's, that's impregnated, penetrated the plastic. What I did on here is that one of these little screws was broken inside, so the case was was opening. So I super glued it on in the inside, literally using my little my special tool kit, as you've seen in a previous clip. Um, unscrewed both of those, took this out, cleaned that off as best I could, took the horrible um, sticker off, and then reassembled it. Now there's still gam in here. But I think because this was sold as being a non-functioning cartridge, that's why there's a load of gam. Anyway, the cartridge works. In fact, the cartridge works spot on. It's just a ming in colour. I mean, you can see there how much light of it is. It's just a failed attempt at retro brighting. So the upshot of that is, don't use B Blonde with water. Now I've seen 8-Bit Guy use peroxide liquid in a tub of water um, and that would have made all this white, which is fine. He has consistent 35-36 degree weather, so the water stays warm. What I should have done is bought another packet of... Sorry, I'm just testing. I should have bought another box, another couple of packets of B Blonde and done one solid bottle per piece of plastic. I also had the great idea of maybe spraying the top bits this sort of colour grey. That would have worked, however, the sticker, the logo, because it's 
silk screened onto the plastic would have been sprayed over and I don't really want that. I would much rather keep it stock and yellow but it working and I can play my SNES games than break it even further. So what I've got coming is a Roxio HD game streamer. So I will be able to record properly games on this machine, games on the Einstein, games on the Spectrum, games on the Atari ST, via HDMI, via composite cable conversion, onto my PC, so I can show and share with YouTube. So there'll be loads of new videos coming soon. Um, but for the moment, I'm going to leave this refurb. I mean, it's refurbed, it's, it's, it's not perfectly refurbed because it's still yellow but it's refurbed in the in the sense that when I purchased both of these they were not guaranteed to work that was untested this was untested completely after being stored for 17 years my genuine controller was sold as untested couldn't be guaranteed to work at all so I was taking a big risk with those the only thing that was guaranteed to work was the power supply because that was tested before I bought it so I could have ended up with a, an expensive mistake with just the power supply but thankfully due to my cool skills uh, not quite um, it works so I will leave it at that I think oh one thing I must show you is while the case was out for retro brighting I filled in the gaps so That's filled in there with epoxy. Um, it's not the best in the world, but it's better than a big crack. And then at the back, as you can see there, those three, that one, that one, and that one, all broke off. And it left a massive gap there. I have no idea where that piece of plastic went. It just went ping and went somewhere. So that now is as smooth as I can get it. And it's as smooth on the top as I can get it. So it actually looks like it did before. So for me that's fine because I'm going to keep this for my own collection. I'm not going to sell this. This is mine. So I've now got a DS, a NES, a SNES sorry, a NES Mini on the shelf over here and a Switch. So I will try and get again the NES and a GameCube and a Nintendo 64 to get my whole collection going. But that's for a later date. That's when I've got more pennies. That's when I've worked harder to get more pennies. So on that note, that's the end of this really, not a failed refurb, but a partial refurb. Super Nintendo system, purchased in a non-working state, not guaranteed to work. Now it works, it just looks a bit horrible. Same with the cartridge. Same with the controller cables. I cleaned those out, fixed those. Didn't take them apart, I just blew down the connections and plugged them in and they worked. Um, so I hope you found it useful, not really a reconstruction video, as you, you, you didn't see me put this back together again because I was in a bit of a haste to get it tested and working. Um, thanks for watching, if you like the video please subscribe, hit the bell icon so you receive more notifications of all, all the videos. It's been a bit rushed this one, I'm sorry, I'm running out of time to create content, that's the truth. I've got loads of content, just no time to do it but I'll try and make time in the next couple of days to make some more content. I've got another Casio watch video coming. Um, this Casio watch, putting a new strap on because it was broken. So I've got that coming up in the next couple of days or so to edit, and then you'll get that next weekend. Um, but on that note, thank you very much. Goodbye.